In this video, we're going to take a look at getting started with the Autodesk Inventor software. So here, when you launch Autodesk Inventor 2016, you're presented with this home screen. Now, the home screen is a way that you can work from a dashboard type style interface to either start new files from scratch or to open existing files and even get some information about those files that you have as well. Let's begin by taking a look at the new area in the upper left of this window. So here, I can start a new part, a new assembly, a new drawing, or a new presentation file. These are all different file extensions for Autodesk Inventor, but these are default templates. These come with the software. So when I choose one of these, it starts a very stock template. You may have a more specific template, such as a drawing template that has your unique title block in it, or a part file that has more unique geometry in it to get started with. And how would you go about choosing one of those? Well, we have to adjust our panes here a little bit. So this pane here allows me to adjust left and right. You can see that changes my overall dashboard. If I pull it down a little bit further, I can see an advanced area. Now from this, we can do a couple different things. We can click on this little configuration cog and specify whether we want our default template to be inches or millimeters whether we want our default drawing standard for our standard template there for drawings to be ANSI or Russian or German or Chinese or Japanese. We can pick a lot of different types there. For now, I'm going to leave mine as inches and ANSI. Cancel. I still don't see where I can pick a specific template. So what I'm going to click on next is this little arrow here that goes to the left. And this shows me an advanced template selection window. So here I can pick from English templates and I can expand that down metric templates, mold design templates, because I have Autodesk Inventor Professional installed, or more specific ones like you see here. To get that back, just choose basic, and that will shoot back over to the right. Now, that's not the only way you can start a brand new file. You could also go up here to the application menu, which is this big letter I in the upper left area of the screen. If you click that once, a menu will pop open, and you can do a new file here, you can choose one of the default ones. If you choose new here, it will launch a window for you to choose from a little bit more methodical dialog box. For now, I'll just choose cancel. A word to the wise, if you were to double click the I, the application menu, it's actually a call to the software to shut it down. So make sure you just click it once, don't click it twice. Don't be impatient, otherwise you're gonna have to restart Inventor. In the next area to the right, we have a shortcut selection for a different project selection. This will be covered in another video. We also have available shortcuts that we can create as well as current file details. This will not populate unless you select something down below. So under recent documents, if I pull this up a little bit, I can see I have some files that I've recently opened. If I click on this front loader, you can see that I have information about that file. So it tells me the part number, the author, stock number, current revision, a description about that as well. So I get a little bit more information without having to open the file up directly. Now, this area down below, you can adjust this to suit your needs as well. So let's say you wanna do a small icon or maybe just a list of files or maybe tiles so you can see the images as well as information behind it. I like using the small method here. And on the left-hand side, we also have a filter. Let's say I don't want to see parts. Let's say I don't want to see assemblies. You can see it gets rid of those filters from your recent documents. You can also filter by date modified as well. There's also a searching mechanism built in to search your recent documents. So as you can see, this is a very robust dashboard for you to work from to start new files or to open something you were previously working on maybe yesterday and you shut down, came back in and you wanna get back into that file really quick. Now, this isn't the only way to access files, obviously. I already talked about how to do a new up there. There's also an open command, so we can open our CAD files. We have our open and new buttons here as well. Some people who don't like this dashboard might actually go ahead and turn it off with this little X button here in the upper right. Now to turn it back on, just go back here to the My Home panel of the Getting Started tab and choose Home. If you come in here and you adjust things around, you can also maximize your recent or reset it back to before you organized your windows. 
You can also do a flip to adjust these up and down. So you have a lot of controls there. So this is a nice dashboard, but again, if you like it, great. If you don't like it, you don't have to use it because you do have your new and open commands you can access there as well. This is just a little bit more streamlined. Now let's talk about the rest of this getting started environment with no files really open right now. So up here, we already talked about a little bit of vocabulary, the getting started. This is a tab. We have a tools tab. We have an Autodesk 360 tab. And each one of those tabs will subjugate commands into panels. So here we have the launch panel, the My Home panel, new features, videos and tutorials, so on and so forth. So we'll talk about projects like I mentioned in a chapter later. We also have the ability to open sample files, some team web information. If you want to actually customize your interface to be more company centric, you can do that. If you want to launch your help system, if you want to look at your what's new in this current version of the software, these are all things you can do here. If I go up to my tools tab, you can see I can also access my application options, the app exchange manager, which are add-ins for Inventor. You can customize your environment. You can write macros. You can work with Content Center. This is some other stuff that's a little bit more advanced. We covered down the road. And also some other web links, such as to supplier content, which is basically a very large database of manufactured parts, as well as idea station. So if you have an idea how to better improve Inventor, you can submit an idea and allow the community to vote on it. For the rest of the interface, we also have the info center that's up here in the upper right. This allows you to type in items to help you find information. So you can do a help search here or a web search basically inside of this info center at the upper right area of the screen. You can also sign in to your Autodesk 360 account. That will give you the ability to upload files to Autodesk 360. So you can share and collaborate those. They can be updated depending on whichever computer you go to. So if you work on one computer at home and another computer at work, you could have your files synced up in that similar way as you would something like Microsoft OneDrive or Box or Dropbox, if you're familiar with those programs. So this has been a look at getting started with Autodesk Inventor and understanding this home screen, as well as just how to access a new file or an open an existing file from our getting started tab here or our application menu.